<laughs> How do you feel about your kill? Are you sure he's down? Oh, <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> Wait till you guys see this. <laughs> Yeah, I love pumpkin pie. This is great. Fresh pumpkin pie is the bomb. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never looked at a pumpkin and thought to myself, I want to eat that. Oh, come on, Gavin. This is great. I'm going to stick with candy corn. Candy corn. Good All right. Lord. We might not agree on this, but what we can agree on, it's time to blow up some pumpkins. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Hey guys, Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. This is the first feature where I've had both of our regular contributors in the same video. Travis Fox, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Gavin. Guy Miner, thank you for joining us. You bet. We thought it would be a great time to kind of hang up the scientific hat a little bit and just have some fun. Travis thought, why don't I go over to Walmart, we'll get, load up the truck with a whole bunch of pumpkins, and let's blow them up. And then we can pretend to be just a little bit scientific in the process. <laughs> well, this was totally scientific. Come on. Very. So we thought. We measured. We measured some stuff. We, we measured some stuff. <laughs> we, we had some fun. It was, it was, it was pretty awesome. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the different guns that we used. We're going to go over the different ammunition specs that we used. And then we have something kind of special at the, at the very end. So guy got everything started. And I'll have to say, the energy was pretty high. On yep. You know, we were, we've were we all been looking forward to this. We've been working really, really hard. This is kind of our chance to kind of kick back and have some fun. Yep. And so, Guy got his 375 H&H &H ready to roll. Tell me what was going through your mind. You're oh, first up. I was going to kill a pumpkin. <laughs> I, no doubt about it. I, the rifle's taken four bears, so... <laughs> Pumpkin was natural. Yeah. I uh, used that uh, 270 grain Hornady, loaded it mm -hmm. to about uh, 2,650 feet per second. It's a real accurate load, and uh, it killed a pumpkin. Oh, yes. Yes, it, it did. did. We were pretty pumped about that one. Yeah. <laughs> what was cool when we looked at the footage was you could clearly see the bullet entering and exiting, and oh my word, big chunks. Yeah, we're talking over 4,000 foot pounds of energy it hit with, so. Yep. Yeah. And I was wondering, you know, that has the the energy and the momentum really to penetrate real deep on some really tough animal carcass or whatever, right? Animal animal body. Uh, I didn't know what that was going to do when it came to something as lightweight as a pumpkin, which we, we filled all these with water because you, you don't want the air to inside to compress. Yep. You want something non-compressible, and boy, did that work. It worked great. <laughs> yeah. I did a little research on good old YouTube here. And I watched a couple guys and how they were blowing up pumpkins and a uh, little, little hole in there, fill them up with water, and very good results. Yep. Very they, good stuff. They definitely blew up with whatever we hit them with. Well, pretty much whatever we hit them with. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, up is the key word. That, that 375 did, if you look at the footage, it really did send things kind of in that upper motion. Yeah, big, yep. big chunks. Big yep. chunks of pumpkin. Yeah. It, uh, I did a fine job. I... I I think the 375 is a great pumpkin gun. <laughs> okay, so then on to lever action rifle number two. Yeah, brought out the uh, 4570 Marlin again. 350 grain Hornady moving about 1900 feet per second. And I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know if that, because it was mm -hmm. a bigger blunt bullet, if it was gonna have dramatic effect or because it's a strong bullet and moving slower. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, it wasn't as violent as the, as the 375 or as some of the smaller, faster cartridges. Mm -hmm. But um, some of your recoil when you shot that, boy, that, that, it's a lighter gun. It is. It's a lot Big of bullet energy. in a fairly light gun. And mm -hmm. yeah, it, uh, it's it pretty lively. Yeah. It hit yeah. a little bit higher as well. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no, I mean, this is part of the experiment, right? <laughs> it hit higher, and I noticed in the high-speed footage that the fragments looked a little bit smaller, which was kind of interesting. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a good gun, good cartridge. Absolutely enough gun for pumpkins. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> while we were on the topic of heavy, slow-moving bullets, I thought it would be time to get out the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Yeah, buddy. You knew that had to come out. And again, I was wondering the same thing, you know, heavy bullet capable of, you know, piercing multiple car doors, whatever, right? Yeah. A bear's skull. But zombies. What's it, yeah, zombies. zombies. Pumpkins. What's it going to do to the pumpkin? And 
for this one, I hit a little bit low. So it's kind of an interesting point, you know, mm -hmm. different effects and definitely larger chunks. And this was kind of something that like, we'll get to this a little bit later, but it seemed like the slower moving bullets, larger pieces coming off. I think so. And, and I think you got some really good effect from that hollow point, that Hornady hollow point just... Yes. That's that's a serious chunk of bullet. This was factory ammunition, Hornady 350 grain XTP. 350 grain bullets are kind of my go-to for just kind of casual plinking with that thing. If you want to call that, if you want to call that plinking. Kind of a light little load for it. Yeah. yeah. These yeah. are well, Gavin's casual plinking loads. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to the 700 grain mats, they're, they're definitely lightweight. That was fun. And then we progressed to what I was really waiting for. So this is my first rifle build. It's kind of got a, all the way to the opposite end of the spectrum yeah, there. Yeah, from heavy and slow yeah. to very light 50 grain bullet, Hornady 50 grain VMAX, 22 250. Yep. And this thing is hauling close to 4,000 feet per second, about 3750, something like that. Uh, again, this is my the first rifle I built. I still have some work to do to this thing. Actually, I've never bedded it or anything. But... That doesn't matter when you're shooting pumpkins. <laughs> no. Well, so when we watch the video on this, mm -hmm. what do we see on this thing? Totally different behavior. Very different results on that yeah. pumpkin. It's dead, but... <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> the, the, that lightweight bullet. Mm -hmm. Tell us, walk us through that while we watch. Yeah, so a huge frontal like explosion, like coming back towards us. And we're thinking what happened was the bullet hit the surface and completely blew up, caused a whole bunch of damage, but the bullet and the pumpkin fragments were all just a cloud at that point. Yeah, if you watch the video, the back of the pumpkin doesn't seem to be as affected. It just kind of <laughs> just falls back. Yeah. Whereas the whole front of it is just like... It was like a hemisphere of, yeah, was, a, a pumpkin that fell like towards the like back. It like flower petals just like... Yeah. <sighs> unfolding. And then yeah. it's unfolded back. And again, I was not thinking to myself, I want to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> I was Pump, thinking to myself, good. it's dead. No, it's not. Candy <laughs> corn is good. We're him on a surprise someday. <laughs> well, you know, we gave up 300 grains of bullet moving from yeah. your 500 and the 4570 to the 22250, but we got a really dramatic pumpkin kill. Pumpkin went really far, and you know what was probably the funniest thing was the piece of pumpkin that slapped the GoPro. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you look at that footage, it just comes flying forwards and slapped right on the front of the... On the front of the GoPro, that is uh, is definitely That's good times. Good. Pretty fun stuff. <laughs> pretty fun stuff. So then the 243. So yeah, then we move back to the my 243 that I have back there. So we're shooting. We're going to double the size of the bullet and not quite as fast. Yeah, the 105 A Max, yep. and it's running. I think I calculated out on that one. That one's running just just a tick over 3,000 feet per second. That had very good results. I was yeah. It pretty much did what I had thought it would do. Yep. Big blow up of the pumpkin. Yeah, here you had a little bit of that frontal blowout that right, we saw yeah. with the 22250. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But you had, with the 22250, it was just kind of like an explosion forward. This one was, again, one of these like rising moments yeah. where all the big pieces went kind of almost straight up. Which you got the front blowout, but then it continued. It has mm -hmm. a little bit more mass, and so it just keeps going through the back. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was impressive. So going back to your 22250. Yeah. Big game applications, different bullet. Man, I am not feeling it at all. Why would you pick a 22250 for a deer? I've I've heard this multiple times. Oh yeah, I shoot a 22250. It's fine. Yeah, the bullet, bullet might vaporize, but it still kills the deer. I'm loving it for rock chucks. I'm loving it for squirrels. I mean, anything in that size range, maybe even coyote, right? But when you step up to a deer or anything with any girth to it, why not go to at least a six millimeter? You know, or, or a heavier twenty-two, or a different bullet. Yeah, true. Um, there are there are two two four caliber bullets made for deer hunting. Um, well, we are going to talk about another another caliber of that, the Valkyrie here in a minute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but before so, we get off off of this subject, this has got a one in twelve barrel, which is very old school twenty two two fifty ish, and that limits what you can stabilize. Very right. much so. So that means that this is square squarely a prairie dog gun, if you want to think of it that way. And for the big game hunting, I mean, one of my most popular videos for hunting is is 300 PRC too much for deer, right? For for big game hunting like deer, and I think actually probably not really. No, uh, I'd rather have too much than not. It's kind of like trucks, right? Bring the dually long bed, right? Leave the F-150 at home. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that. <laughs> 
I'd rather have too much truck than not enough is the point, right? Yeah. Every truck has its place and its application, but no one has ever said, oh, man, I brought too much tow vehicle, right? <laughs> True. True story. <laughs> okay. So so then we, Travis and, I, Travis and I were going through the gun safe in here, you know, and we were thinking, what else do we want to show? And then we saw the 300 Blackout. Well, we I thought, thought, yeah. We got to do this. Somebody's going to, so we have to take a subsonic and see what it's going to do. Yep. We'll see if we can do something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we get up there, I get on the gun. <laughs> And I shoot it, and Kevin says, I think you shot over it. And I'm like, it didn't do anything. I'll hold underneath of it. Mm -hmm. and I shot it, it didn't do anything. So we go over to a target to try and take another shot. Mm -hmm. And it was like, a little yeah, piece of pumpkin, little piece of pumpkin yeah. up on the hill up there. And I'm, I'm like, oh, see that pumpkin? Yeah. And I drilled it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. hmm. So I go back to the pumpkin again, and we're like, pink. And I'm like, oh, I am hitting it. It yeah. wasn't doing anything to the pumpkin. So and, and on the high speed, you could totally see the bullet, right? This is uh, with the Barry's 220 green subsonic bullets. Not an expanding bullet, not the yeah. best test if you're thinking of just defensive yeah, no. things or anything. But so we have three impacts. Yeah. On the pumpkin. Yep. Technically, the pumpkin is definitely dead. And those are the exits from yeah. those three bullets. So it does work, kind of. But this is this reminds me of shooting rock chucks with the 22 long rifle it's more of a oh you got me oh no and then it <laughs> crawls behind the rocks and dies right not yeah. very spectacular so the good thing with shooting these on this pumpkin is we can save and make more pumpkin kai for gavin later oh man please no <laughs> okay so the 300 blackout what what are your guys thoughts i mean it's fun to shoot it's fun to shoot suppressed subsonic on steel at yeah. close range that's yeah. my absolute like fave go-to rifle for yeah. that kind of thing you know someday we're gonna someday soon hopefully we're gonna get some of the sub x uh, sub x bullets um and try those in some of our ballistic gel yeah and we're hoping to see what that does and that's gonna be very interesting to see yeah definitely like but how good could this get for defensive applications for hunting applications and and that kind of thing like would you would you have a subsonic 300 blackout ar-15 in your home you know, in a safe under the bed, in a biometric safe. I don't know. Yeah. We're going to have to do some more experimenting. In the meantime, we know this is fun to shoot, and uh, we'll just continue to do that with it. Yeah, absolutely. What did you think, Guy? Uh, 300 blackout. I wasn't real impressed. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't very exciting, was it? <laughs> no, no. Not after the 22250 <laughs> yeah. sent pumpkin parts in orbit. Right. You know, but, yeah. We did bring out one more rifle, and yeah. that was the 224 Valkyrie bolt gun, the Remington yep. 700. And I put in some Federal Factory ammo that has the Burger 80.5 green. Yeah. Bullet. Now, watch the results of that caliber. Mm -hmm. Same caliber as the 22 to 50. Mm -hmm. Different bullet. Slower velocity. Yeah. But look at the penetration on that. <laughs> yeah. It actually reminded me of the 243 because you had kind of bigger chunks. The 243 probably less, but but bigger chunks in upward upward motion. Yeah. That pressure spike just kind of sends, it's, it's got a solid platform on the bottom and has nowhere to go but up. Now, Sudden pressure increase, boom. What do you think about taking deer with that caliber? Oh boy, I would pick something else. I mean, that yeah. you probably could. Sure. It didn't, it didn't blow up and disintegrate like the, like the 22 250 did. Right. You had an 80 grain bullet instead of a 50 grain bullet. That's a pretty big difference. Very much so. I think at close range with the right shot placement, I would feel pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah, I would. And I would pick something bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would also. I would also. But we know that there's many states that the 22 cal center fires are mm -hmm. legal for taking deer. Mm -hmm. So it's a possibility. Well, we have a project coming up where we'll get into some of that. Something completely different. Yeah. It's going <laughs> to be cool. Yeah, than what cool. you've been likely to see. Okay. So that was all of our main shooting. We have one more thing up our sleeve to share with you next. Hey, everybody. I wanted to introduce you to the full Ultimate Reloader team, including our cameraman, Tyler Gibson Hale. Tyler, thank you for coming on the channel. Thanks for having me on. It's good to be in front of the camera and not just behind <laughs> it for once. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we've been wanting to get Tyler more hands on with guns and we thought what better way to do this than to save the grand finale for tyler oh yeah so travis <laughs> went over to the last <laughs> pumpkin actually the last two and filled them up with diesel and tannerite 
You can see where this is going. And we thought, what better rifle to use than the 22 250 So we lined up Tyler. Now, what was going through your head at this point? I just wanted to see something catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good thought. Yeah, yeah. I was really stoked to see the explosion. I was, I was super impressed. I'm standing behind the camera. We've got our first shot lined up on the pumpkin. Yep. And when that sucker blows up, I was stoked. So I was really anticipating how big this explosion was going to be with the <laughs> diesel, with the right. Tannerite. Like, yeah, super stoked. And the, the first one basically just looked like the water ones. I mean, from what mm -hmm. I could tell. Yeah, it was really funny because um, that first shot on the Tannerite, we actually looked later and there was a slit like through the Ziploc bag. I'd actually oh, just okay. shot just above the Tannerite. Oh, so, man. Yep. Yep. Just, just missed it yep. by that much. Missed it by that much. <laughs> yep. So the, the second puck, pumpkin was wheeled into position. <laughs> Tyler got on target. And, and Tyler was so excited that he forgot to press record on the rear Did you have pumpkin, camera. pumpkin fever? <laughs> pumpkin fever. I think Tyler might have had pumpkin fever. That's right. Have. I might have. That's Elevated okay. heart rate, you kept, jittery you kept behavior. Together, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. I got I got back to uh, to the firing line. I was rolling on the GoPro, rolling on the slow mo, mm -hmm. rolling on our NX eighty R side cam, and then just got right behind the rifle and never even hit record on our fire line, <laughs> firing line <laughs> cam. <laughs> we might have to resort to some phone footage for that. Okay, so you pull the trigger and what happens next? So I pull the trigger, and there's actually not any recoil or anything like that. I was, I was kind of expecting that, yep. to be honest. Yep. Uh, but Travis briefed me a little bit and said, hey, there's not really going to be any much you know, recoil. Right. But uh, all of a sudden, I just hear this, and everybody going, whoa! So <laughs> I, that was us. <laughs> Our neighbors that live at the end of the road, they're total off-grid people. I stopped them, and I was flagging them down. They're like, oh, what's wrong? And I'm like, no, you want to see this? We're going to blow up some pumpkins with Tannerite. And she's like, yeah! So she comes over. Everybody's watching, and the explosion was amazing. It was like it was, it was, it was like the Death Star. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, awesome. just completely <laughs> blowing up. But there was no flames. Obviously, the Tannerite went off. Yeah. But it didn't light the diesel. Right. Next time. More exper experimentation <laughs> next time. for next time, huh? <laughs> Gosh, well, you're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, it's, it's pretty addicting. What was also interesting was you heard zero Tannerite boom. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. I did. It was totally quiet. Normally, when you hit, when you when you shoot a rifle, it's boom, boom, right? You hear the rifle go off, and then you hear the bomb go off, and you, sometimes you can feel it hit you in the chest. Contained by the pumpkin, probably. Contained by the diesel. Yeah. Oh yeah, the diesel and the pumpkin. You know? just kind of. It's like a wet blanket. But it just like the <laughs> diesel did cause this like just like this. I don't know. It was cool. Like this kind of like. Just like this vaporization. Oh yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It and was pretty impressive. The stuff went way further. It was. It, there was very very small fragments well, back where we were. Yeah, at. there was chunks coming back yeah. to us. We were how far? Thirty five yards away. Yeah. Yep. Something like that. So we should have been in the bomb shelter, you know, like they do yeah. on MythBusters, whatever. Yeah. But yep. That was the pumpkin that was guts all over us. <laughs> we were what, good. What we're really, really wondering though is, do you eat more candy corn or do you eat more pumpkin pie? This is an important question. <laughs> I mean, you're probably not going to see me digging my hand into a bag of candy corn. Oh, man. Good man. Okay. Here's what we want to know is what do you think about pumpkin pie and candy corn? Which do you prefer? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. And please thank Guy, Tyler, and Travis and myself, the entire Ultimate Reloader team for coming together to bring you this story. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. Give me one of those guns. Yep, cold gun. Yeah, I checked it. Now, here at Ultimate Reloader, we work with guns on set every day. Now, would I just pick up a gun, point it at something dangerous and pull the trigger? Absolutely not. We know the three rules of gun safety and we follow them religiously. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting. Did anybody notice that there's three guys with facial hair and one guy without? <laughs>
I didn't notice. I